so in preparation for your mink practical exam we're going to review muscle groups one through four and we're going to start with muscle group number one so there are two landmarks that I pointed out to you when you started to dissect and the first one were these hard round structures here called the mandibular glands and along the side um, of each side of the neck you have the external jugular vein so we can find the other muscles of muscle group one um, as they are placed on the mink in relationship to those two landmarks. So let's look at the muscles that are found on the actual head of the mink. So find your mandibular glands and go directly superior to them. This muscle here um, below the mandible of the mink found bilaterally is the digastric muscle you don't need to know the muscle that's on the inside. Then, lateral to each of the digastric muscles, you have some large round cheek muscles. This is the masseter. We can see it on the other side of the mink as well. The masseter. Now, while we're looking at the side of the mink, we can find a rather large muscle that you're going to be using as a landmark for most of the other muscle groups that you need to know. So first, find your external jugular vein and the muscle that's directly lateral to it that swings down around to the front. This is called the clavotrapezius. The clavotrapezius. And the clavotrapezius is going to end at this line right here. Oftentimes you can feel the indentation a little bit better than you can see it, um, but you can see it pretty well on this mink. This is gonna start a new muscle. It's a triangular muscle here called the clavodeltoid. The clavodeltoid. The clavodeltoid is going to originate at the clavicle and it's going to insert onto the humerus. This is the clavodeltoid. Using your external jugular veins as landmarks again, so here's one and here's the other one on my mink. The muscle that is in between those is a large broad muscle called the sternomastoid. The sternomastoid. And if we flip back a part of the sternomastoid, we can see another muscle in muscle group one. This is called the clidomastoid. The clidomastoid. And if we move this apart, the sternomastoid, and we see this long, rigid tube, this is called the trachea. So let's review the structures in muscle group number one. I'll point to it and give you about three seconds to answer, and then I'll tell you what the structure is. So let's start here. Name this muscle. This is the digastric muscle. Name this muscle. This muscle is called the clavotrapezius. Name this muscle. This muscle is the clavodeltoid. Name this muscle. This muscle is the sternomastoid. Name this structure. This structure is the mandibular gland. Name this muscle. This muscle is the clidomastoid. Name this structure. external jugular vein. 
name this structure. This is the trachea. Name this structure. This muscle is the digastric. Let's move along to muscle group two. We're going to start with the lateral aspect of the mink to review muscle group number two. And the first thing to know is that you have three trapezius muscles all in line from the head down to beyond the arm itself. The first trapezius muscle is the clavotrapezius. You saw this in muscle group number one. Caudal to the clavotrapezius is a muscle that covers the scapula. This is called the acromiotrapezius. Caudal to that is a triangular shaped muscle called the spinotrapezius. And the large, broad muscle that the spinotrapezius rests upon is the latissimus dorsi. Now, if you follow the fibers of the spinotrapezius, you'll see that they point to a small, oval shaped muscle found right here. This is the spinodeltoid. Cranial to the spinal deltoid, you see a rectangular muscle that peeks out from underneath the clavotrapezius. This is called the omo cervicalis. There are three muscles on the upper arm that you need to know. This muscle here is called the dorsoepitrochlearis. Inferior to that is the long head of the triceps. And inferior to that is the lateral head of the triceps. There are two muscles that you need to know that are found on the ventral side of the mink. So let me flip them over so you can see. The first forms a sports bra across the chest of the mink. This is called the pectoralis major. The pectoralis major. Inferior to that, you have the pectoralis minor. And this muscle, if you follow the fibers, are going to form a V towards the midline of the mink. From this aspect, you can also see the latissimus dorsi on either side of the mink. Whoops, sorry. Let's review muscle group two. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the triceps lateral head or the lateral head of the triceps. Identify this muscle. Let me move the mink. This muscle is the clavotrapezius. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the latissimus dorsi. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the dorso epitrochlearis. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the spinotrapezius. Identify this muscle.
This muscle is the omo cervicalis. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the triceps long head, or the long head of the triceps. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the acromiotrapezius. Identify this muscle. Pectoralis minor. Identify this muscle. Latissimus dorsi. And identify this muscle. Pectoralis major. Now we'll go through muscle group number three. To see the muscles in group three, you needed to cut and reflect the clavotrapezius. And now you can see the middle musculature of the head and neck. So this here is the clavotrapezius that was cut. And uh, kind of stuck to it was this large muscle that you saw in muscle group one. This is the clidomastoid. The clidomastoid. Above that, you have the rectangular muscle that you only saw peeking out in muscle group two, but now you can see the rest of it. This is the omo cervicalis. The omo cervicalis. Above that, you have a muscle that kind of wraps around the neck. It's also going to go underneath the acromiotrapezius and it will connect to the scapula. This is called the atlantoscapularis. Atlantoscapularis. Looking at the top of the mink's head, you can clearly see a V shape here made by two thin band, bands of muscle. You don't need to know the middle of the V, but you do need to know these. This muscle here is the rhomboidius capitus. Rhomboidius capitus. And this muscle here that connects to the cervical spine is called the rhomboidius cervicus. The rhomboidius cervicus. You can think of it as kissing the cervical spine. And then here, this muscle that I've been holding back, again, is the clavotrapezius. So let's identify the muscles of group three. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the omo cervicalis. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the rhomboidius cervicus. Identify this muscle. This muscle is the clidomastoid. Identify this muscle that we cut. This muscle is the clavotrapezius. Identify this muscle. This is the rhomboidius capitus. And identify this muscle. This muscle is the atlantoscapularis. 
Finally, let's review muscle group four. To see these muscles, we had to cut through the acromial trapezius and flip it over. We had to cut through the spinal trapezius and flip that over. And uh, here you can see the rest of the ablantoscapularis and where it would have attached to the spine of the scapula right here. So this here is going to be a landmark for you, the spine of the scapula. But we're going to reflect our atlantoscapularis back as well, so the, and uh, our almost cervicalis too. So what we're looking at is kind of the sh a, a large shoulder muscle. Notice that it is in front of the spine of the scapula. This large muscle is called the supraspinatus. On the other side of the spine of the scapula, it's kind of above the spinodeltoid, you have a tear-shaped, teardrop-shaped muscle. This is called the infraspinatus, the infraspinatus. If I extend this guy's arm a little bit, next to the infraspinatus, you have another small, it looks like a small muscle, but we're only seeing a part of it. This is called the teres major, the teres major. Don't confuse the teres major with the rest of the dorso epitrochlearis. So to see the rest, we're going to flip the arm up, get our latissimus dorsi out of the way, and now we're looking at the underside of the arm. This large muscle here is below the scapula. This is called the subscapularis, the muscle that's below sub the scapula, scapularis. Next to that, we see a large oval-shaped muscle. This is the rest of the teres major. We saw only a part of it on the lateral view, and so uh, here in this deep view, we see the rest of it. So this is the teres major again. And then we have this large striped muscle. This is called the serratus ventralis, the serratus ventralis. Um, if you look, it kind of looks like finger-like projections, kind of like the serrated edges of a bread knife, and it's on the ventral portion of the body, the serratus ventralis. And that's all you need for muscle group number four. Let's review. First, identify the major landmark that you need to know. It's this clear part right here. Tell me what this is. This is the spine of the scapula. Identify this muscle. This is the infraspinatus. Identify this muscle. This is the supraspinatus. I'm going to extend this arm a little bit. Identify this muscle. This is the teres major. Identify this muscle. This is the serratus ventralis. Identify this muscle. This is the teres major. And identify this muscle. This muscle is the subscapularis. And that's all for muscle group number four.